we all suffer from stress. It's a natural part of life. And the more ways we have of managing that stress, the better it is for all of us. So today I'm going to look at a really different way of managing stress, and that's through the medium of art. Uh, something that I've not had very much experience with, apart from perhaps one, which maybe we'll talk about later. I'm going to be talking today with uh, art and wellness coach Rebecca Bush about this really interesting subject. But before I do that, uh, I want to ask Rebecca what it is that stresses her out on a day to day basis and how she manages it. Thank you for having me here. So what stresses me out? Um, I think it's the unexpected. So an unexpected large bill, um, something like that, um, a frustration with technology or something when I'm trying to use it for business. And also just the everyday um, sort of scenario of worrying about loved ones. You know, I've got um, an older teenage daughter and, and, a, and a grown up daughter and it's, you, know, you don't stop worrying. So sometimes there might be something going on that I feel a bit helpless about, but I can't really influence or take charge of for them. So, so that's really interesting because they, they're three very different things, but they have a common theme which is, uh, you know, something unexpected coming up is, is about not having control of what's happening and uh, the technology, not having control of what's happening and the things that happen to your girls, not knowing uh, how to control what's happening. So that seems to be the thread. Um, <laughs> <laughs> do you have a way of managing it at all? Yes, I do. Um, I've got a couple of kind of go-to things that I'll do. Um, one is to use art. <laughs> um, and the other one is to get out in nature. Yeah. I find it really hard, actually, to be stressed if I'm in nature. It's yeah. an amazing escape. Um, so they're sort of two physical activities that I will go and do um, that then sort of access that emotional release. Yeah. Um, but also, I kind of have a little conversation with myself. I remind myself that um, a, a little conversation about control and not having to fix everything and that a solution will present itself and that it's not all in my hands and my timing. And that I think it's that acceptance that's the key. Yeah. Um, we don't have to like something at all, but as long as we can accept it, we we give, give ourselves a lot more peace of mind. I like to, because control is, is something that's important to many people. Um, and certainty is something that we all like and what we have no, none of at the moment. So I like the serenity prayer and a lot of people will know this already, um, but I'm gonna share it for those people who, who don't know it. And the serenity prayer is, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. So it's kind of the, the acceptance piece comes in there with you, doesn't it? Some things we just have to accept they are what they are, but also we have a lot more control over things than we think. Um, uh, but, you know, use, use the word, word helpless there. Sometimes we feel a little bit helpless, but mm -hmm. if we can just do what we can do, um, then it makes us feel more, um, uh, more empowered, I guess. Yeah, and I think for me, it's when I acknowledge that I've always got control over my response. Absolutely, um, yeah. That puts me in a much better headspace. Yeah, th that reminder that we do, because sometimes we feel helpless, but we're not as helpless as we tell ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> okay, excuse me. So let's talk about art then. So what, what how uh, has art got to do with stress relief? Because I'm going to be honest with you, I did try it a little bit and I didn't find it stress relieving. So I was doing something wrong. So tell me from your perspective how it helps with stress management. Okay, so um, all creative activities, but obviously my specialism is, is art specifically. Um, they're a path to mindfulness. Mm -hmm. it, it's that connection to that quiet time and making those busy busy swirly thoughts that are running around our heads all the time just to 
stop them and just to suspend the outside world for a brief, given a brief pause, a bit of respite. Um, and that is invaluable, mm. having that time out of, of our inner chatter um, and whatever external things might be going on in our lives. It's, it's like this, um, it's like a little sanctuary, a little bubble that you can access. Um, and I think that there's a barrier, lots of people have different barriers to that. Um, and so it's my kind of passion and my mission to help people to overcome those barriers and to connect with their innate creativity, you know, it's in all of us. Yeah, so that, that's really, I love uh, some of the words you used there. I think the word I like the best was respite. Uh, and I'm just thinking, what, what, what did I do wrong then? And I realized that what I did wrong was my internal chatter simply continued with the art. So I should produce something really gorgeous or, or uh, accurate, you know, proportionately accurate, get the perspective right or whatever. I always think I was drawing a tree or something or flowers or something. And I was just irritated with myself that it didn't look the way that I wanted it to. So there was a lot of self-judgment there. Um, do you find that that comes up when you're coaching people? Oh, yes, lots. Yeah. It comes up in coaching and in art classes and workshops. Um, it, it comes up all the time. You know, you're not alone, Tricia. <laughs> it's there's you've got that kind of that perfectionism that some people hold that they hold themselves to a standard. Um, you know, I try to kind of I reflect on these sorts of things quite often, quite regularly with, yeah. with all of my students. It's something that comes up all the time. You know, in every class, they'll get reminded that, you know, yours doesn't have to look exactly like mine. Try not to overthink it. Try not to think about what it's going to look like at the end. Let's just focus on these brush strokes. Let's just focus in on what we're doing in this very moment. You know, and that's that's the definition of mindfulness, isn't it? Being fully yeah. present. Um, I always do the back to front. <laughs> <laughs> unusual at all that's really not unusual um it's a metaphor for life though isn't it how we kind of overthink things and with you know it's good sometimes to think of what is the end result that you want to get but it can get get in the way of so if we're looking at art as a mindful activity that is so going to get in the way yeah um what and, and you've got some of your lovely work behind you haven't you and so do you want to talk about a couple of those pieces yeah, I'd love to. Okay, um, I'll start with this one as it's closest to me. In the so, way that it relates to stress management, if, if you can, that would be great. So, <laughs> right. this angel, yeah, this um, it's called Rainbow Bringer. And this is a really good example of um, being truly present. When I started painting her, I didn't know what I was painting. I just, and this is how I work with quite a lot of my paintings. Um, I just know that if I get my paints out and I'm at my easel and I'll see what colour I feel like playing with and then something will just start to evolve in front of me. Um, and so she was a good example of that. I started with her, the rainbow down here and it kind of turned into a dress and into, a rain, uh, into an angel. So um, that was a really good example of just going with it and just trusting and that's another thing that I really encourage people with is is just trusting their own instincts and and just seeing where things take them but that comes with building creative confidence so there's kind of a little bit of a a journey in there for most people to get to that point where they'll just see what happens at the canvas rather than plan something beautifully from start to finish. Um, and I've, I've got another one nearby, which was the same sort of thing, really. I knew that I wanted to paint a woodland scene, um, but I knew that I also, I had the feeling that I wanted to express within that was that um, it was that sort of guardianship. So um, it, it started really just with this, this shape here in the middle of the, the canvas. And I, that's my favourite palette to work with, all those blues and greens together and turquoises. So all I knew was there's going to be some sort of woodland here. The feeling I'm trying to express is this. They're the colours I love to work with. Let's see what comes up here. 
Um, and so that's how I quite often work. Um, and although in classes I'm teaching a, a theme step by step to help people develop their skills, at the same time, I'm, I'm really trying to pull them back from their overthinking and perfectionism and, and to have patience with themselves too. I think that's what I was missing as well with mine, <laughs> but, <laughs> a bit of patience. But you, you've mentioned the word, what I wanted to express. So I, I guess what you're saying there is um, that it is a good tool for expression. So you, you wanted to, um, you're talking about creating a woodland, but is it a way of expressing what's going on for us inside? Absolutely, yeah, right. definitely. Um, that creative that's, that, that's therapeutic then isn't it sorry talking over you um that's therapeutic then isn't it yeah the the impact on our well-being of that creative self-expression it, it it just can't be it, you can't put a price on it you know you yeah. can it it's so often underestimated yeah. um and that that out, we all need an outlet um, and sometimes that needs to be more than just having a chat with somebody. Sometimes that creative self-expression, it just taps into something within us. Mm -hmm. It's a kind of creative, it's a connection to the self. Um, it's a lots of people in my classes say that the art, art lessons have really taught them about themselves and patience going back to that is a really key one of those. Mm -hmm. Lots of people start off with their, um, as new, new members, always desperate to get to the end and have this finished painting and like, don't wish your hour of relaxation away or your hour and a half of relaxation away um enjoy enjoy the moment enjoy the journey uh, and be patient with yourself who who jumped in a car on the first day and, and knew that they'd be able to drive without any instruction and practice it, it doesn't happen does it but we we can be quite harsh on ourselves when it comes to the creative pursuit it also makes me think that you know, for those people, look what I did. They're more engaged with the validation that something gorgeous will give them rather than the therapeutic process of producing it. Yeah. So, um, so I think that's a, an important distinction. Uh, and you do a lot of work with mandalas, don't you? And um, I don't know if there is a significance in that, if, if you just like them. Uh, I'm not sure everybody knows what they are either. Uh, but they're very popular right now, generally, and and in your work too. Yes, they um, their original purpose, as it were, it, you know, they've they've been around for a very long time. Um, we're going back to sort of uh, ancient uh, Tibetan Buddhism, and they were an expression, um, a spiritual practice, actually, not just an expression. The, the creation of a mandala originally was a part of a spiritual practice in the journey towards human enlightenment. So all those concentric layers that build outwards are each created mindfully as part of that spiritual practice. You know, there's um, in traditional mandalas, there's often you'll see a layer of fire, that's the burning away of human ignorance. So they're, 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 they're intricate, they're um, sort of a palace of the mind as it were, but they've become so popular in the West, which is just fantastic because that I've found, and the reason that I've been using them at workshops and, and lots of um, different settings is because they're a really accessible way for people to, to connect with their creativity. People who don't see themselves as good at drawing, <laughs> um, everyone can create a mandala with the very basic, simplest instruction, and they just can be a switch for some people, just switching on that, oh wow, look what I did, and it is actually very lovely. <laughs> I can draw a little bit, or I, I can use colour, and it, so I use them as a tool to, to flick that switch with a lot of people, as well as the wellbeing benefits of the mindfulness in its creation. And that, that makes me uh, think now about uh, the mindfulness books that have been become very popular, sorry, the mindfulness colouring books that have become popular, and you can get mandala versions of those as well, can't you? Is that the same as doing uh, art or is it different? What is your, your view? I, my view on those, I, I think they're wonderful. I think I'm, I've never been so happy as to see something so sort of mass produced and, and accessible. And, um, you know, it's, I'm not an art snob. You know, I think a, a colouring book is a wonderful way, for, again, for someone to access 
their creative nature, to just quiet their busy thoughts, to enjoy playing with colour without having to think about the creation of what they will then colour. Mm. So I think they're amazing. Um, you know, we can't underestimate the impact of colour as well on our emotions. Yeah. So that's just another outlet for people, another valuable self-expression. Um, I, I think that they're a wonderful tool, especially for, you know, those sort of varied level of ability as well. Um, and they can help build people's com confidence towards them going, I think I might have a go at drawing myself, actually, or I could probably do something a bit like that. I'm going to try and copy it. Mm. Okay, thank you very much indeed. That's been so helpful. Thank you, Rebecca. Um, and I always ask my guests if there is a book that they have read that they have found inspiring or helpful in their lives that might also be helpful to somebody else. Do you have something in mind? I do, and I, I have it nearby. And I absolutely adore this book. And it's, it, it has kind of become very popular. So The Boy, The Mole, The Fox. And the horse. Oh, I love that book. Um, yeah, hold, hold it properly to the screen because you can't, it wasn't very easy. That's lovely. Perfect. Thank you. I thought there's a <clears> very <throat> talented author and illustrator. I mean, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? There's something, yeah. it's kind of a book for life. I quite often just pick it up and open it on a page and see what it's going to tell me that day. Um, and those drawings and the little messages with them they're so heartfelt they they really do kind of connect they definitely well they resonate with lots and lots of people it's very popular um i have some of them as gifts um and because i just think they're so beautiful uh, do you have um it's so beautiful sorry do you have a particular quote that you would like to share with us i've put you on the spot a bit there <laughs> yeah no that's okay i've got a marker in my favorite page because i can tend to look at it a lot so <laughs> Is your glass half empty or half full? Asked the mole. I think I'm grateful to have a glass, said the boy. Oh, how beautiful is that? I really love that. I think it's, it's a yeah. beautiful reminder for um, gratitude as well. Yeah. Um, it just makes me smile every time I read it. It doesn't matter how many times I think about it's, that. It's a beautiful, beautiful book in, in, on every level. And who'd have thought, because when I first saw it, I thought that's a children's book, surely. But when you look inside, it's actually very, very beautiful in terms of not just the illustrations, which are beautifully done, but actually the, the uh, sentiments that it gives as well. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Thank um, you, Rebecca. Oh, so you were just gonna say something. That's okay. I was just going to say, may I share one little tip with your yeah. listeners to help for anyone who thinks of themselves as someone that doesn't have an artistic bone in their body. I hear that expression a lot. <laughs> may I share a little tip with people to help them? Um, so a really good starting place is just to look out the window if you're not able to get out for a walk. Um, if you are able to get outside, then great. And just really notice what shapes in nature and what colours you find most pleasing. Really notice them, perhaps take some pictures with your phone, but just sort of spend a bit of time just sort of drinking them in and enjoying them. And then with those thoughts in your mind, just start by doodling. Just have a doodle on a bit of paper. It can be the back of an envelope. You don't have to rush out and buy an art canvas. Um, just have a little bit of a doodle and just play with those shapes and those colours. You know, they've spoken to you. They've given you some sort of pleasure. So they're a really great starting point. You don't have to go straight in there and be able to create a masterpiece. It's just about playing with shape, colour, lines, um, and just I say it. Don't ever underestimate the value of a doodle. <laughs> <laughs> what a lovely note to end on. Thank you ever so much. It's been terrific. Um, what I will do uh, is put your website and information uh, on uh, with the video so people know how to get in touch with you and, and perhaps enroll on some of your classes as well. I do hope that everybody's really enjoyed this as much as I have. If you have, do please share. You never know what difference it might make to somebody. This might be the absolute technique that's going to make the big difference to them. Um, if you haven't subscribed uh, already, please do so. And if you want to make any notes underneath, please do, please do that as well. Thank you so much. Thank you.